the upsetting of the system. Dr. King, as an example, uh, to further illustrate the spirit of the movement, one day went down to the Montgomery Railway Station uh, to buy a ticket to go to Fisk University to give a lecture. It was in the afternoon, no one was in the white waiting room, and uh, you must understand, if you do not already understand, that in the South at this time, segregation was relatively complete. There were white waiting rooms, there were colored waiting rooms, there were white drinking fountains, there were colored drinking fountains, there were white restrooms, there were colored restrooms, and so on. So Dr. King went into the white waiting room and bought a ticket. And they were so surprised that they sold it to him. The next afternoon he came to catch the hummingbird to Fisk where he would deliver his lecture and he was met at the door by a white policeman who said to him immediately, King, get around to the back where the niggas belong. And Dr. King quietly said, no, I have a first class ticket. I am going to Fisk University to, deli to deliver a lecture. I hope that you're not going to keep me from going. And so they talked and they discussed. And uh, Dr. King insisted, no, I'm going to use this door and this waiting room. And finally the policeman said to him in exasperation, all right, King, you're, you can go through here today, but if you ever use this room again, this door again, I will meet you not as a policeman, but as a man and I will kill you with my own hands. I heard this conversation. Uh, Dr. King said, I'm sorry that you feel that way about it, sir. I bear you no ill will. I wish you the very best. But every time I leave Montgomery, I will leave by this door and this waiting room. And he went ahead. In many ways, King was more revolutionary in 19, in, by 1968 than he was in 1955, by all means. And we watched that growth. He was also more aware of the systemic problems of our society. And one of the lasting elements of his thought, it seems to me today, is contained in his little book, Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community? that was written in 1967. And in that book, Martin King, for the first time, brings the mature thought of SCLC and many of us of the staff to bear. Because by that time, we are saying that racism is intricately connected to militarism and violence, and that militarism and violence are intricately, intricately connected to poverty and greed. That the, these interlocking cruelty systems that one, I think, can trace from the very beginning of our land in different forms were, in fact, so interdependent that black people could no longer fight racism without also fighting the issue of poverty. And they could no longer deal with poverty if we did not deal with the question of violence and militarism. And this is where, from the nonviolent perspective, a, a major contribution of Kingian thought, if I can use that phrase, is significant even for the present moment. Because it is a lesson that in some ways we of the black community have not yet taken to heart. As I have looked back across those years, um, I have often referred to Martin King as the Moses of our generation. Uh, I was preaching this in the 60s. I was absolutely